Hello. We're here for Monday Mingle. 80 mile per hour mom over at 80mphmom.com has set it up so that a bunch of bloggers from all over the country and even some overseas can answer a series of questions so everybody learns more about each other. Bunch of useless facts that are actually pretty fun to know. So for this particular week, the questions come from Carrie at the5fish.com. And if you haven't visited her website, do it. She's funny, and I know you'll enjoy yourself. So check it out. And her questions are um, actually a lot more uh, thought-provoking than some of the other questions uh, that I came up with, which, you know, what kind of superhero power do you want to have? I mean, that's what I come up with. She comes up with actually, you know, some pretty cool questions. So... We're going to get into that, and I apologize for this little ghetto setup here. And I don't mean ghetto in the sense that, oh, what's wrong with I, you know, I use a webcam. What, what's he saying? What I mean is I had big plans for a kick <laughs> mingle today, but uh, I almost burnt the house down. Whoops. What happened is I bought this really cool video camera for my new hobby, which is, you know, going to be a Hollywood movie producer, and so I could do some really neat video tricks. And if you saw last week's mingle, um, you know, if you were among the nine who saw it, you saw that I interviewed myself. And the timing was really difficult to get down. The editing took me almost six hours, and that equates to about 45 minutes per viewer. Um, not sure that was worth it. But I had fun doing it anyway, and you know, so anyway. So I set up this video equipment in the garage, kicked the cars right out of there. They're gone. They're in the driveway, harvesting pollen from the pine trees. Um, so I bought this camera, and then I had to have lighting. Um, so I bought a bunch of lighting, and then the sound didn't sound good, so I bought a bunch of microphones, and then that was pretty cool, but I need a green screen, and I need stands, and I need tripods, and I need all kinds of video equipment, and $2,000 later, I have my little amateur video studio set up. Um, so I plugged everything in, and it worked awesome. It looked so good for about nine seconds, and then, boo, everything dead. Killed the power. Um, check the breaker box, because I'm electric like that, and, and you know, flip flip the breaker back, and then um, whoa, Griswold family Christmas time again. Totally bright, beautiful, vibrant for another six seconds. And then, boom, dead again. Call an electrician. Apparently, pay close attention to this. Apparently, you can't put 4,000 watts worth of power into a circuit that's made to handle 1,500. So, a little over, okay. Lesson learned, uh, melted some wires, and um, it's got to be rewired, and then he has to put in a different breaker and wires and junction jibber-jabber stuff so that I can handle up to 6,000 watts of illuminating power. And then once that's done, we're going to have that kick Monday mingle. But that might not even be next week. It might be the week after. Um, he's going to come out next week to rewire. So sorry about that. So anyway, these questions for this week come from Carrie at the5fish.com. Visitor, if you um, have some time, because it's worth it. She's funny. And um, anyway, so let's get started. She has three questions. So you must be a little on the wild side somewhere. <laughs> How about any tattoos? Piercings? Show us your wild side. If you are free of any taintings, do you want any? Piercings or tattoos? Um, no, I have neither and no desire to. When I was a kid, I was tatted up to the max, um, but they were Cracker Jack, Cracker Jack tats. Uh, they're temporary, uh, relatively painless, and they looked awesome, you know. Um, but I have no pain tolerance, and piercings, absolutely not. There is nothing on me I'd like to have pierced, you know, ears on a guy. I don't know. Maybe that's like the only, you know, pick one. Uh, that's the only thing that should be pierced. I see, you know, well, I don't see, but I hear guys piercing down below. Uh-uh. Nope. Absolutely not. But tattoo-wise, I just don't, I, they, they tend to last forever, right? Now, when you're on spring break and you're 20 and you get a tattoo, it rocks for about six years. You know, it's cool. It's to talk. But then you get older, you know, and like, when you put tattoos in less discreet areas, like let's say on your bikini line, or you put them, you know, I see you know, people's lower backs, or you know, their arm, or their, you know, right above their breasts, or whatever. Over time, skin tends to move, sag, or 
expand or otherwise. And tattoos fade over time. I see guys like hard army guys that served in World War II and they got tats that probably started out as an anchor but now just looks like he brushed up against some charcoal. But I don't, I, I wouldn't want to be the, you know, oh, look at my dolphin. It's a dolphin. Looks really hot at like 20, 25, 30. But what if you're like in your 60s or 70s and your grandchildren, Grams, show me your tattoo. Show me your tattoo. And then that dolphin, you're suddenly like, check it out, it's a blob. Check out my blob. You know, it's an ink spot. Check it out. Um, I just, I don't know. It's it's not for me. Uh, they probably look awesome for about five years. And that's the life expectancy of a, of a killer tattoo, in my opinion. And then after that, um, it's time to buy some cover-up clothing. Um, anyway, on to question number two. Considering the state of our world today, what is the one thing you might change, suggest, or push for or against if you were elected to office? First of all, I would feel very sorry for any municipality, anywhere, even a condo association, who elected me to any position of power. I am easily corruptible, and I'm so fascinated by the mafia that I'd probably be strong-arming them to, uh, you know, organize some things. Racketeer or whatever that is. Um, but anyway, I, the biggest thing that bugs me about political office is having advisors. So that would be the first thing I'd get rid of, any advisors. I want it to be like a monarchy, a Greg monarchy. I've got good ideas in my mind. and But no one... I, I can't get my family of advisors to agree on a restaurant at night. So how can I possibly expect to get a populace to also agree with me and my decision making? Because if I choose barbecue and I don't like the way their chicken's breaded and you know I lobby for vegetables you know that's my wife and you know the kids I lobby for, for Cold Stone Creamery. Um, but you can't get anybody to agree. So, no advisors. That'd be my first order of business. Number three, reminiscing about my impending 10-year anniversary. It's kind of ironic. Very close to mine as well. Can you recall any of your wedding day? Yes. Absolutely. And I treasure that day. Uh, vows? Yes, I did vow. I couldn't really tell you what they are now, but we did kind of write our own. And I also wrote her a poem, which made her cry. Uh, earned me major points. I actually think those points haven't expired yet. And any funny or memorable moments from your special day? Well, I can share both. I can share a memorable moment that led to a funny moment. The memorable moment, which wasn't so funny, is that my wife's maid of honor stood her up, did not show, called the day before, all seemed to be fine, but come the wedding day, nowhere to be found. Police called, trying to find, make sure nothing happened. Did her plane go down? Did she make it to the airport? Apparently, the long story that divulged over time is that she never got on the plane. We don't know if she didn't af couldn't afford it and was embarrassed and felt bad, or um, if Heather made her up. I don't know. But anyway, I felt so bad for her, but her brother stepped up and was maid of honor. And that brings us to the funny part, because her brother is this rough and tumble guy. He's in the army. He's, uh, you know, He's a he's like a tough guy. He wrestles, you know, bears, and you know, he's you know, he, he's not your typical maid of honor. Okay, let's put it that way. So he acted as a maid of honor, and it was adorable because it gave me the ability to walk around all day saying, "Brian, Brian, always a bridesmaid, never a bride." And you know, a couple minutes later, Brian, always a bridesmaid, never a bride. Your day will come. I hope you catch the bouquet. You know, uh, so I had a blast with it. Um, but during the ceremony, Heather's dress, the train, needed to be fixed. And most maid of honors, they prance over there quietly, you know, and they pick up the train, and they flow it behind the bride, and they make sure it's smooth and beautiful. Brian saw it was a little off kilter, balled it up into a big ball of fabric, and then threw it behind the bride. And everybody burst out laughing. Um, guy just wasn't macking it as a uh, as a maid of honor. He just didn't have the chops. But uh, it was great that he stepped in. So that was pretty cool. Well, I'm trying to cut my mingles down a little bit because I'm afraid that I lose viewership or maybe not enough people, you know, they know I drone on to like the 10 minute mark. I'm trying to cut it down. I see a lot of mingles being around three or four minutes and um, I can't talk that that little, you know, give me a break. I gotta, you know, I'm just, I'm verbose. I'm sorry. 
So I'm going to cut it out now, though, and just let you know that next week might be another ghetto mingle, but then the week after, when I got all my new power equipment, lighting, circuitry, 12-gauge wire stuff that could power a nuclear plant in place, we're going to have some fun. So with that, I thank you for watching, and we will see you for next week's Monday Minkle.